got Bannon County. Bannon County. I don't know how you can do that. Please stand up, Chairman of Bannon County. What's that? Bannon County Chairman, please stand up. How many are here? We have 17. Thank you. Okay, Custer, I'm sorry. Four. Okay, and uh, yeah, Blaine County, we don't want to leave them out because we have a bunch of new committee people. Just do this one at a time, all right? Blaine County. Blaine County, six, right? Thank you. Was that, what county was that? Bingham. Bingham, thank you. And Bear Lake. Yes, we missed that one. Five for Bear Lake? Thank you. Okay, Caribou County. Franklin County. Payette. 
Power. Power County, Fargo. Shoshone. Shoshone County, Silver Tap, where the world has said that the universe has four of them. Teton. Twin Falls. Twin Falls, the host county, and remember all the roads in the world lead to Twin Falls. Salut. <laughs> Valley County. Valley County, five for Washington. Washington County, any type of water of our country has five dollars. I think that completes our delicate roll call. Um, is there anyone? Okay, we have to do the legislative. You're right. Okay, one through 25, 35. District 1. Legislative District 1, three present. 2. Legislative District 2, 2 present. 3. District 3, 3 present. 4. Legislative District 4, 3 present. 5.
Good morning. Good morning. The committee, having been called to order pursuant to rule, consider the standing of the delegates of this convention. Upon due consideration and after thorough review, the committee determined the eligibility of all delegates and alternates to the 2012 convention of the Idaho Republican Party. A list of all credential delegates and qualified alternates to the convention is being maintained by party staff. The committee considered four separate challenges to the delegations from Twin Falls, Benoit, Gooding, and Ada counties. Each challenge was granted a hearing wherein the individual bringing the challenge was given five minutes to present his or her case. Each county was also permitted five minutes to respond. These presentations were followed by Q&A from committee members, which was limited to one minute for each question and each answer. And the following is a summary of the key motions considered by the committee. Thank you, Congressman. After extensive, extensive deliberation in the case of twin, the Twin Falls County delegation, a motion was made to seek the delegation as originally constituted. The motion passed on a majority voice vote. In the case of the delegation from Benoit County, the motion to seek the delegation also passed on a majority voice vote, with a proviso that the county chair submit their rules to the state party for review and critique. The hearing to consider Gooding, the Gooding County challenge resulted in a motion to seek the delegation, which passed with a unanimous vote. The motion also contained a proviso that the county chair work with the state party staff and council to ensure that best practices would be used in future delegate selection meetings. The fourth point, which was a uh, compromise settlement reached by Ada County, and I'm going to go off the record here just for a moment and take a, a point of personal privilege. Congressman Labrador actually sat down with the folks from Ada County. This was a very detailed challenge to very uh, to about a dozen different delegates, and it was going to take a lot of time and a lot of uh, uh, resources to resolve. Uh, Congressman Labrador sat down with the parties involved, uh, got them to sit down and, and discuss it, and at the end, there was a compromise settlement reached, and so the committee did not have to make a decision. The compromise was submitted to the committee, and the committee uh, passed that with, uh, with uh, unanimous consent. So uh, Congressman deserves a great amount of respect for bringing those two parties together, because that was not an easy task. So uh, I was saying that if anybody comes looking for a vice president, presidential candidate, uh, I used to have a favorite in our United States senator, but I don't know, there's like a close second now after that, because <clears throat> he got us all out of there in time for lunch, so that was... Uh, <laughs> I'm easy, I'm easy. Uh, with that being said, the committee closed its deliberations with the unanimous passage of two additional motions. Number one, to approve the delegate list with allowances to be made for substitution as needed uh, of those alternates who are properly reported to party leadership and staff. And then secondly, to recommend that the Standing Rules Committee of the State Convention that the rule regarding the committee assignments be reviewed and interpreted for future conventions. I stand in opposition to the committee report. My name is Tiffany Clark. Um, just one minute. Um, I will rule you in order in just a minute. We need to get a motion first, and then we'll, we'll uh, provide an opportunity for agreed parties to have five minutes. So let's uh, get a motion from probably the delegate chair. On behalf of the committee, I move that the most current role of the delegates be the official role of the voting members of the convention, respectively uh, submitted co-chairman credentials committee, U.S. Representative Raul Labrador, Republican Party Council, Jason Rich. Mr. Chairman, I move to be here on minority report. Excuse me, we need to get a second on the motion for a second. Okay, we will, we will proceed under the rule. Uh, the rule states in the event of an objection, and we have one over here already, to the credentials committee report, any aggrieved delegate, alternate county or district shall be entitled to not more than five minutes in which to present his or uh, its contentions to the convention and credentials committee shall have an equal amount of time to support its report to the convention. The convention shall then vote on the issue, provided, however, that no delegate, alternate, or delegation whose eligibility, qualifications, or priority is in question shall be entitled to vote. So we have a motion to approve the Credentials Committee report to seat all of the delegates that were contested. And we're now on the point of the process where anybody that wants to object can have up to five minutes, and the Credentials Committee can respond to that. So please, Tiffany, identify uh, who you're with and state your uh, objection. Tiffany Clark, I'm a Legislative District 5 delegate and a resident of Benoit County. 
Um, before my five minutes begins, I would like to uh, request that the Credentials Committee Chairman to repeat their ruling they stated to the Credentials Committee regarding the violation of state party rules. Are you specific to one of the four challenges? Which one? Oh, Section 2. I'm sorry, Benoit County. Um, I believe what, what we're looking for here was there was a, uh, the committee voted to have an interpretation from the chairman, uh, myself, and the congressman regarding uh, two provisions of the rule. Uh, one of the provisions being, um, well, actually, and, and we, we wrote down here to make sure I get it right. The provision was we were, uh, we were interpreting Article 2, Section 2, and uh, the, the ruling determined that Section 2 requires the delegate selection meetings to be open. Uh, if you re review the rules, that's very clear. It says open meetings. And secondly, that uh, no additional restrictions upon eligibility to serve as a delegate can be added uh, by the county situation. I think that was the well, ruling that she was looking for. In, article, in, article 2, Section 3? That was Article 2, Section 3. That's correct. And those, the, the committee uh, decided that uh, the Congress and I should make an interpretation of that. We provided that interpretation to the committee. The committee then used that in their report. Let me begin by reading from the RNC preamble. Be it resolved that the Republican Party is the party of the...